Namaste beautiful souls. Very, very important message coming to you from the magnificent Uluru. Isn't she divine? Just soak in her power and her raw energy. But it's vitally important that you listen to the next set of instructions, which is the magic box rituals for the 21st of December 2020 are now starting at 7.32 p.m. Uluru time. So that's Northern Territory time. We're being asked by the elders, the original people of Australia, to start our meditations an hour before and to continue our meditations an hour afterwards. So if you don't know how to meditate, that's fine. It's just bare feet on the earth, connect to nature, um, have beautiful, loving thoughts, have positive thoughts, have kindness in your heart. Remember, we're sending the energy through the ley lines, through the song lines to Uluru. You don't have to face Uluru, but the intention is that Uluru is like the center of the spider and the song lines, the ley lines go out from the spider. So wherever you are in the world, and we know our beautiful My Health tribe, you're all over the continent. We know there's clusters of yoga schools doing rituals together so it's really important because the times have changed now the reason the times have changed is because the elders only drip feed the information as it gets closer to the magic box now there's reasons for that that we won't go into but it's really really important that we now switch to 7 32 p.m northern territory time okay so get out your time converters work out what time that is an hour before an hour after hold the space send the loving energy some of you are doing rituals all day that's perfectly great as well uh, listen to the interview uh, with Steve Strong that I've just done here today at uh, Uluru. He does mention the original time that we thought it was, which was 9.02 p.m. So just listen to me again. Scrap 9.02 p.m. Don't worry when Steve says that in the upcoming interview. It's 7.32 p.m. Northern Territory time. So get on board, everyone. We need as many souls feet on the earth as possible all across this beautiful earth of ours because we're ushering in the golden age this is a gateway that we're passing through it's absolutely vital guys that you participate in this momentous event it's not necessarily even about the solstice and the grand conjunction although that's happening as well so there's so much happening but in australia it is about the magic box opening listen to steve uh, speak up next and yeah will just feel the magic and feel the mystery and uh, let's do this together everyone sending much love from the room well, namaste i'm so delighted to be sitting next to the magnificent steve strong the absolute legend of australia he's in the spotlight right now and for good <laughs> for great reason steve is the uh, spokesperson for the original people so many of you have followed us on our social media and of course our Awaken New Earth healing program as well as the powerful interview that Greg did with Steve. So I'm going to hand it over to Steve to have a chat about the magic box prediction. We're one day away. We're currently at Uluru. Um, we're feeling the energy. There's so much vibration happening here. I've uh, listened to Steve this morning do a chat at a conference and, and pretty much blubbered my whole way through it because the heart just opens up when you listen to this beautiful man. So Steve, uh, you know, so many people have contacted us just wanting confirmation on what is happening tomorrow here at Uluru. If you can speak to what we need to do, go through the steps and, and just, you know, talk about the magic and the mysticism as well at, about this time. Okay, well, I've, all the way through, I've made it clear that I've had some question marks about whether this was actually going to happen. And even when I got here, uh, even a day and a half ago, I still wasn't sure. But I got some information from people I really trust. And we're getting some more information at the moment that might be the absolute confirmation I'm seeking. But what I've worked out from what I have been told is that I'll use the quote, I use this today from someone who gave this to me yesterday afternoon. And somebody I really trust, his name is Alan Parsons, he said to me, after the 21st, put on your seatbelt, strap it on and get ready for the ride. So we know something is going to take place, but it's become a bit clearer to me how this has come about. It's come about because there's something different here that's never happened before. Yes, we've been putting out the information we've been given and all the way through I've been saying, I think, I think, maybe. I've made that clear from start to finish, but 
it sort of became clearer to me last night what that maybe wasn't. It is actually going to take place. There will be a ceremony, but it, I didn't dawn on me till now. The ceremony is very much not a colour thing anymore. It's to do with the fact that people from around the world of different colours and different shapes made this ceremony. We didn't. We didn't make this ceremony. You've got to remember, there have been meditation um, groups before that have done things, but it's been conducted. What's happened here is spontaneously people have been approaching us on a daily basis, 50, 100 people each day saying, can we run meditation groups? And it's now become clear this has gone around the world. But there's something different about this because it's not guided. There's no, oh, we're not guiding this. We're just handing out information. We claim no leadership and no control over this. Each person now is doing this separately. And we believe the magic box, and, and I'm, I can't say until after the event what the magic box is, but I now know what it is exactly. And those people who say, this is rubbish, it's a metaphor, they're wrong. And they're right. Because it is a metaphor, but it's also literal. There is actually a magic box. And it can be turned on, and it can only be turned on by us. Now, I want to make a point. People have been writing to us each day saying, you've got the time wrong because the solstice occurs at this time. And they say that the conjunction can uh, takes place at another time. They're both right. But you've got to understand, my understanding is this, and I was told this at the very beginning. I wasn't sure what it was based on, and I've got to be honest, at the start, I didn't know there was a solstice. I didn't know about that. That came later, after the time. The time was always 9.02, and the time is 9.02 for one reason only. The park shuts at 9 o'clock. After nine o'clock, you aren't supposed to be there. The only people who are allowed to be there are the people who are actually the custodians of the place. It starts at 9.02 because there's two hours for two minutes just to clear everything out and get ready, and then it begins. Yeah. So if you want to become involved in this, and you don't have to face Uluru, that's not important. But what you do have to be is you have to be with the Earth. Now, I am aware of the fact that groups in Iceland and Scandinavia and England have said, it's the middle of the night and it's bloody cold out here. <laughs> and they said, if I take my shoes off and I put my bare feet in the snow for 10, an hour, half an hour, I'll get frostbite. And they made a valid point. Now, remember what I said? I said, I want you to be in contact with nature. So the way around this is very simply, get some leaves, get some dirt, put things inside your shoe that are nature, and then you're back in contact with it. And that will begin the relay. If not, then find something that's growing in the ground. If it's a tree, wrap your hands around it. Okay, if that'll do, because that will take you in the ground. So if you need to relay by using nature to get you there because it's cold, then that's what you do. Yeah. But what I do know now is the ceremony is going to happen. But I didn't realize the original, there will be original people involved in, I'm sure of that. But it's more important that everyone else is involved in this because it's a number thing. Mm. I mean, you can have the greatest elders, and I've met some of them, the greatest elders that walked and, and now left on this on this place. I've been lucky enough to meet, meet elders that know real magic and done it in front of my eyes so often I can't question it. And mm. I'm a scientist. Yeah. But when you see people do things where you say, well, that's either a miracle or it's what we could do. Yeah. And that's and what... And you're talking teleporting and these sorts oh, of things. Oh, I'm too. talking. Yeah. I'm talking. Graham Hancock will swear... Kano disappeared in front of all of us and he disappeared and he smiled about it. Yeah, and, and you've when, seen it firsthand. And oh, as you and say, so it's Graham and yeah. so are 10 other people And as there. a scientist, as an archaeologist, I mean... No, no, yeah. it doesn't fit in. There's that, no book for this. That's right. And I, on my outside the book. So yeah. this is going to happen. The magic is in the land and the magic... Uluru is the centre. It's the navel of the earth mm. and it's the navel of... The, when it comes to spiritual stuff, this is where the magic begins. Mm. And it's going to emanate from there. So what the story is very simply is that 9.02, start half an hour before, get yourself warmed up. Think of it like this. If Roger Federer was playing in Wimbledon, he wouldn't turn up on the day, the first day. So right then, I won't train, I'll just turn up here and come. No, don't do that. Train up a bit. Get yourself ready. Yeah. And when you're there, I want to make one point when you're doing this. If you've got negative thoughts in there, and that means negative thoughts from two or three days ago about someone that upset you, and that's easy because there's so many people in this world that are upsetting. Whether it be COVID, whether it be a leader, and we've all worked out our leaders don't care anymore. Forget them, leave them apart. And when you go on ceremony, 
I've me me mentioned this today. I don't know if I did mention this, but I read this beautiful story about a ceremony that took place at Mount Yengo, where all the tribes that were fighting laid their spears down. And when they went on to sacred ground, no one spoke a negative word or thought a negative action. And they laid their spears on the ground. And when they went there, they spent days and days in meditation and ceremony. And when they came back, all their fights were gone. <laughs> they forgot why they were fighting. Yeah. Because that, all of that had gone. So what we ask you to do is clear your head. And if there's anyone there that's caused you grief, think about this. If they've caused you grief, whatever they said is their problem. What they said to you is their issues, not yours. Let them and feel sorry for them. Feel sorry for the fact that so close to the change, here they are backbiting and bitching about other people. Where's that gonna get us in the future? Yeah. This is gone. For me, one of the most pernicious things there is in the world is gossip. I look count it as a mortal sin. If you don't like the channel, change it. Don't stay there and whinge at the channel when it's there. If someone says something you don't like, well, just smile and say whatever. Yeah. I, I don't care. If that's your problem, if you say that about me, fine. That's your opinion of me. I don't care anymore. Yeah. So it is going to take place. It is going to happen. And the numbers now are getting to the stage where even me, the ultimate pessimist from the very beginning, I said, I don't think we'll ever get these numbers. And I can't say what they are. They're massive. I'm starting to believe for the first time we will get the numbers. But people have got to understand that this, and I'm going to quote a Muse song here, is the last chance to save ourselves. Yeah. This is it. If this doesn't happen, then the earth will clean itself. And to be honest, and I said this this morning, humanity deserves to be wiped out, but not the cicadas, not the insects, not the animals, not the birds, not the mammals. They never did anything wrong. Mm. They lived in nature's accord, and in return, what happens to them? We destroy them. Yeah. And now we're going to wipe them out. We have an obligation for all of the animals we've hammered and all the insects that are dying, and we're losing insects by 2.5% per year. Forget global warming. 40 years from now, there are no insects here, and we'll die. We'll starve to death. Yeah. Without insects, we can't grow anything. Yeah. So it's gone beyond a maybe. This is it. So what I'm saying to everyone, it's a leap of faith for us because up until I'm getting a phone call right now, as you know, yes. which may be the first absolute confirmation yeah. I've been seeking. Steve's got one of the elders who will be calling him any moment now. Yeah, and it's so the we're women. very privileged to be talking to it's Steve. It's the women, this, not this the, I, I don't. The women are the ones who are the leaders in the future, and yeah. I've got to make this point for all the men. Remember, once this happens, the world becomes matrilineal, and we have to step back. Our decision making over the last 8,000 years when we've taken over has been appalling. Yeah. And we don't deserve to lead anymore, so the women will take over. Our job is to whisper in the air and suggest and hope and stand by our women, but when the vote comes, get out of the room. We're not in it anymore. Yeah. So this is it. This is the time. And I'm saying to the people listening to this, go and find your friends, go and find your relations, go and find anyone you can. Because if you bring them along, you might be putting them on that road. And remember, this talk of two roads, it's not just an original thing. The Mayans spoke of the two roads. We all know that, don't we? Yeah. They said there'd be two roads to walk. Well, the road might begin tomorrow. And there may be two roads after that point, And then your soul will determine which road you're walking. Your brain... You might think, I want to go that way, but you didn't do this. You didn't get yourself ready in time. It's no good saying after the signs, oh, the hippies and new ages were right, I want to join. It's not like this. This is all about a leap of faith. We've put our reputation on this. We're going to get smashed if this doesn't happen, really, because we've gone out on a limb on this. And all the way through, while I'm doing it, I've been saying I'm not even sure. So I'm prepared to do that. And I'm prepared to put everything we've done, all the science we've done, on the back of something, even now, at this life's moment. There's still a doubt, and there has to be a doubt, because I, I still haven't got what I think is absolute confirmation. But then, you know what? I don't think I'll ever get that. This is not going to be like that. And after the event, I've got to make one point. Don't look up in the sky expecting to see Jesus on a cross or a UFO. <laughs> because if you, that's what you expect, you didn't have the leap of faith and if that's what you want well i'm sorry you haven't got the point of this this is yeah. now about you have to commit yourself 
and I can't give you absolute proof. Mm. I think I'm getting it. I got, I got most of it last night. I got it from two elders that I have a lot of respect for, and one of them is I consider one of the greatest elders that's ever walked this planet at any time. I got information, confirmation from him and from another. So what I'm going to say is, I don't think there's an option. You have to go out and do this. And if you don't do it, well, there's nothing left. Get ready. Because three years from now, the water's coming and we can't get away from it. I keep using the quote of that. Was it 2012 with the monk ringing the bell? Mm. That's what it'll be. Yeah. That part's right. That we may just sink ourselves again, Steve. You know, maybe Atlantis revisited if we... Uh... Well, don't you know, literally rise. Well, you, know, <laughs> we don't I've literally got three, rise. you know, I've got the three Atlantean rings, yes. and I can prove that scientifically. I'm yes. really going to be comfortable with that because I proved yeah. that scientifically. Everyone go over and watch Steve's other videos. Yeah. Well, I've got them for sure. Mm. And why are they here now? Mm. And why have I got the Lemurian rings as well? We've got four of those, right? And we've got three of the others. Why are they turned up now? Why have we got the skull of a Pleiadian, which we've got in our room up there now? Yes. Why are they here now? Because they're all here for this. And remember this. All our alien friends have been coming to this place for so long. Mm. Why did they give up all their time and effort for the event, they call it? They call this the great event. Yeah. And the sad part for them is they would love to put energy into that box, but they can't yeah. because they didn't create the mess. We're the ones who did it. It's an old saying, if you create a mess, you clean it up. If you don't clean it up, the mess will clean you up. And that's yeah. where we're up to. Yeah. So please come and join us. And if you've got 1% doubt, that's okay, you can have doubt. You're allowed to. But what you can't do is when you go there, you have to lay down your spears. And if you don't understand what that means, I'll give it to you in a modern way. What you've got to do is you've got to lay down your mobiles and your little computer things you've got. When you go into ceremony, we cannot have someone ringing from outside while you're doing that. That's like being attacked with a spear again. That mobile and that thing that we're using right now to film this, and it's great <laughs> for that right now. Yeah, it's But once service. you go on to ceremony, none of that business can be there. You have to go back to nature. You have to be with a mother, and you can't have technology as part of that. I mean, if you want to play music, oh, well, that's okay. I mean, I said the one group, there's a group I love, a pagan group, it's called Healing, when they wear the antlers and they, it's so pagan and so beautiful. And someone said to me, can we play drums? I said, bring them all. Yeah. If you want to dance, if you want to sing, if you want to do anything that makes you happy, do it. Yeah. Because if you don't do it tomorrow, there's only a few more tomorrows after that before the nature says, well, you can't heal it, we will. Yeah. And if that happens, if Uluru is turned on, then it goes to six sites, five in Australia, and I'm not sure where they are. I've got an idea where a couple are. Everyone's telling me where they are now. All day long they've been telling me. I know where it is. Yeah. I'm thinking, nobody knows one in New Zealand, then the rest of the world. And our ley lines, our song lines, are like a spider web. If the spider web is touched anywhere, the spider knows, doesn't it? And he comes across straight away. Well, she knows, and she comes across because it all resonates together. That's what this is. If Uluru's turned on, the spider web is turned on, the earth is turned on, the Schumann resonance starts to resonate and it gets higher and higher. There'll be two roads, two resonance, one at 7.8, which will never change anymore. And then a new one that goes up and up and up. And then the day will come, we think it's three, maybe four years from now, not straight away, where that lower resonance fades and disappears. And every soul that has chosen that road will fade and disappear with them and then the world changes for a long, long time. That's the message we have. I'm becoming more positive over the last few days. I've got to be honest, when I got here, I was beginning to question this myself. Right. Okay, but I actually went to the rock yesterday and I did three sets of ceremonies for my rocks. Yep. And my rocks have now given this ceremony to all my other rocks which are in formation now. And they're telling me this is going to happen. Wow. So, yeah. Please come and join so us. So please everyone, and I know that so many of you are joining not just in Australia, but our tribe goes out across the world. It's a global tribe. Yeah. It's a and global tribe and everything's interconnected. And I was told also, which was a shock to me, the number we need in Australia 
is the same number we need in every continent. Yeah. Of so course, the number will be smaller in Iceland for you guys. <laughs> I know that you can't get a six-figured number, <laughs> but whatever you get, I know that Icelandic mob, I, I forget the name land that the person is doing, Guran or something like that, I can't even say. I give you an extra tick for what you've been doing because I know they've got hundreds, maybe thousands of people involved in this and think about it. Yeah. It's going to be three o'clock in the morning. It's going to be minus 30 degrees if that isn't commitment. If they yeah. can do they that. They can do it, everyone can. Come on, guys. If yeah. they can do it in Iceland, you surely can do it. Because wherever the conditions are, mm. the worst they will be mm. is in Iceland. Yeah. And whatever you've got somewhere else, don't will you whinge because that mob's <laughs> doing it. And exactly. whatever you're going through, it's going to be minus 30. It's going to be yeah. 3 o'clock in the morning and they're bouncing. Yeah. So come so and join us. the main question Steve and I keep being asked mm. is the time. So it's 9.02 p.m. at Uluru. Uluru time. That's Northern Territory time. Don't worry about solstice. Don't worry about conjunction. Yeah. They're around it. Don't you see all these things are happening at once? They're all around it. They're going in the middle of it all. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be this far about from the mind of the major conjunction. That much difference. What yeah. difference does that it make? It makes no difference. It makes no difference. Yeah. It's at the right time. It's at the time when the park is closed. Yeah. They did it at 7.30, and I've got one person run around telling everyone, you start your meditation at 7.30. What if you don't continue past 9 o'clock? One and a half hours was a waste of time, wasn't it? And that's yeah. going around a lot. We've got people who are deliberately trying to mislead people and lie about this. I would never lie about this. I've always been honest from the very beginning when I wasn't sure. I'm being honest about the fact that I'm 99.99% .99 sure, but I'll always harbour a doubt until after. Yeah. But I know the time is right. I know the place is right, and I know the people are right, and I think we have enough now. So mm. if more can join us, yeah. that will mean their souls will be part of this too. Yeah. And that's part of the magic, isn't it, Steve? That what you know, that point one percent or whatever it might be, where we have the doubt, because then we give it over to magic. We give it over to the. That's creator, why the it's creator. a leap of faith. Yeah. If it wasn't a leap of faith, and you knew for sure, and you were proved empirically yeah. it was right. Have I got the commitment I need yeah. from the right people? I've got the people who say what I see is what I get. I don't want that. No, I that's want the still the third dimensional matrix. Yeah, that's still that's the not same thinking. You've yeah. got to make that leap of faith. We've made it. Yeah. And all the way along, I've been kicking and screaming as we've <laughs> gone there. I've made it clear I wasn't sure. But I've made that commitment yeah. and I'm committing myself to that. And if I'm wrong, I'll apologise. But yeah. guess what? I don't think I am. No, I don't think you are either, Steve. And, and I just want to thank you so much for um, having this chat with us. And uh, I also want to thank everyone because I know there's AL graduates, they've got their own yoga schools across the you know every continent in the world. And there's so many clusters coming together to send energy to Uluru. So, but massive thank you to you, Steve. Uh, to me, you're the most divine, pure, authentic, beautiful soul. And uh, just to have this time with you is, is an absolute privilege and an honor. And uh, anything that we can do uh, going forward after after this momentous event, uh, we're here as well to Well, what to I'm support. gonna do next year, I'm calling together original people from all over the country. I grabbed about three today. And we're gonna start in February with online conferences. It's no longer about if. I then wanna introduce you to the culture in every possible way yeah. by bringing in elders we know. And we've got some really brilliant entertainers and great elders we're calling in. And you'll get to understand how this tribal way of living is going to come back so that we all become a tribe as opposed to a group of people competing. Yeah. And the things like the cabal and the generals and the CEOs, they, they're going to be part of a history where we'll all shake our heads and say, how did that happen? And thank God we got rid of it. Yeah. And this is our last chance, and, guys. And, and let's thank them because they've activated us. Oh. You know? We're, let's we wouldn't give, be who we are without Let's them. be honest. Let's give them thanks for the one thing they did that may have tipped the scales in our favour, and that's COVID. Yeah. Because COVID made people realise they don't care. Yeah. And they realise they just want to take all our rights and liberties and turn us into slaves. They saw that. That's if it. they hadn't released COVID, they thought it would make us fearful, and it did make some, they're gone. Mm. The ones who've become fearful, I can't say. Yeah. But the ones who were saying, I, I believe it exists, and some people believe it doesn't. I don't really care. Yeah. It means nothing to me. What does exist is the fact that they're using this as an example to make us fearful. For God's sake, in Australia, for three or four weeks, we didn't have one case, and every day in the news, all they talk about is COVID. When it's coming back, the vaccine, something about COVID, 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 COVID. That's all people know now. Yeah. But that's what they talk about. That's what they want. We're going to talk about Uluru. We're going to talk about the change. We're going to talk about the fact that history is happening here. 
So we've got to do this. Remember one last thing, I want to leave you with this. I've been told many times, if it happens here, it's going to reverberate throughout the whole cosmos. This is the beginning of a change where evil, which has taken over control and it's far too strong, evil can only win on this, con uh, this place now. What happens here goes everywhere. And that's why they're here. And they're crossing their fingers and they're hoping and praying we get this right. Yeah. And we got one day left to get this right. So come and join us. Yeah. Oh, Steve, we oh. love you so much. Thank you for everything that you're doing My at pleasure. this time. We're sitting in the sun, it's come out again. We're in Let's the go. sun at Uluru, there's oh, flies. God, yeah. but, and the heat. but we're we're high on the energy. <laughs> oh. Thanks again, Steve. Pleasure. Take no care, worries. darling. Thanks. Right. Namaste everyone. <laughs>